Sunday, February 11th, the Winnipeg Jazz Orchestra celebrates the charismatic and compelling sound of big band used in memorable film scores, from classics to recent box office hits, in a show titled City of Stars. To tell us a little bit more about the program, I'm joined by Winnipeg Jazz Orchestra guest conductor Neil Watson. Hey, Neil. Hello, Simon. How are you? Oh, I'm doing very well, thanks. Thanks Great. for popping by the studio. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, before we get talking about this program, I, I just want to begin by asking, is this your first time leading the WJO? <laughs> yes, it is. How are you feeling about it? Oh, my goodness. It is so much work. I, You know, uh, I'll probably rant a little bit about this on Sunday, too, but it's just it's amazing to me how much our artistic director, Richard Gillis, does for each show. I can't imagine doing this six times a year for 21 years, and he's we're, we're lucky to have him. That said, it's been a ton of fun from figuring out what we're going to play to uh, I've written two arrangements for the band to play just because the music didn't exist until a <laughs> few weeks ago uh, to, you know, coming and talking with you to writing press releases to uh, program notes, all those things that uh, you sort of have to deal with when you're putting the show together. And it's been great. I, I mean, uh, that you know, we're going to touch on a lot of those things uh, coming up. Has it been a dream for you to lead the WJ? Because you perform with them before, right? Yeah, I perform with them all the time. Yeah. Um, Yes, in some ways. Uh, certainly, as you play with the band, you know, you get ideas for uh, things that you'd like to see happen. And so it's been kind of neat to realize some of those things. But really, you know, the show was out there. Uh, it was uh, this one coming up, City of Stars, was suggested, I think, at one point by somebody in the audience, which hmm. a lot of our show ideas come from people who come to the concerts. And so when Richard asked if I would take this one over, um, I sort of sort of fit my ideas into what I wanted to see for this show. Nice. Uh, so the program itself, I mean, it's a, it's a fun one to lead. I mean, you're getting to perform film scores. How, did you get to program th those films? Yeah, basically, um, I as soon as uh, Richard asked me to direct this show, a few of the songs that were performing on Sunday popped instantly into my head. Nice. Uh, so, for example, the uh, theme song from the movie Incredibles, which is yeah. one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> I had two young kids, so I see all of those Pixar films, yeah. and I love that movie. Uh, that one, uh, there's a movie that we're going to we're performing uh, uh, a Robert Altman film called Kansas City, huh. uh, and he put together this great cast of musicians in set in early 1930s Kansas City uh, and the the soundtrack is incredible I wanted to do something from there uh, the movie Swing Kids from the early 90s a young impressionable Neil just going into university saw that <laughs> and the big band score from that knocked me out I thought I have to do something from there but I also sort of went to Facebook and Twitter and I asked everybody, what do you want to see at a movie like no this? Way. And I got tons of people that had suggestions. Nice. And so I, I imagine you work some of those into the program then as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. As many as I could. Oh, look at that. You, you get to interact when you, you play with the WJO. <laughs> that's, that's pretty unreal. Um, so uh, you, you touched on one of the things. I mean, not all of these scores that you've mentioned exist in a big band arrangement. Um, you did a couple of the arrangements yourself, yes. right? What, what's that process been like? Um, it's, it's, I really enjoy it. I yeah. really enjoy, uh, writing for big band. I'm pretty new at it. I haven't done a lot of that. We've got some arrangers in the band who are seasoned veterans at writing for big band. For me, this is a relatively new thing, but, but I, I, to, to sort of get in your head what you want it to sound like. And then realizing that, so last night we rehearsed and I got to hear these scores that I had written for the first time. <laughs> and uh, I, it was so exciting. It was so, uh, you know, to my ear, it sounded really, really good. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure everyone will feel the same way. I hope so. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so uh, from there, I mean, the show's titled City of Stars, uh, which is a, a song sung by Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone and La La Land, music by Justin Hurwitz. It's, it's a great tune. It's an earworm. As soon as I, I've read the title, it's been kind of going in my head nonstop. Um, what? What made that the, the title of this program? What resonated for you? Um, well, the uh, truth be told, when when we were when this idea, audience members sort of came forward, and, and I guess with the success of that movie, totally. and, uh, a couple of years before that with the movie Whiplash, mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, "Look, we'd like to hear you know these music from these movies and others." Uh, La La Land is it's not really a big band so much no. in the movie it's it's a musical it's just an unabashed Absolutely. musical and so the song city of stars it's real as you said it's just an earworm that kind of comes and goes throughout the movie so that's one of the songs that we had to realize as a big band chart uh huh. so pen to paper yeah. come up with some ideas 
Uh, and, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, out comes this big bang. Is that one of your arrangements? Then? Yes, oh, it that, is. That, that is awesome. I mean, so for those who haven't seen the, the film, I guess Ryan Gosling kind of saves jazz, jazz gone by in a, in a way. And, and to me, what I think also works is that given that the whole musical, uh, like you said, it is an unabashed musical, encompasses kind of the, the classics. It's got a nostalgic feel, and yet it's so modern. It, it makes sense for the program because what you guys are doing doesn't just feature modern stuff. It, it features classic hits as well. Right. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, we're doing we're doing stuff that sort of runs the gamut of the big band era, right? So you think about the movie Swing Kids, which mm-hmm. was kind of war era Germany and uh, the height of the big band era in uh, the United States. So we're doing some stuff from there. Uh, I mentioned the aforementioned Kansas City, the Robert Altman film, is set in the early 30s in Kansas mm-hmm. City, which was a hotbed of jazz. That's where Can- mm-hmm. uh, Count Basie played every single night at a club called the Hey Hey Club. <laughs> That's where Kansas, uh, where Count Basie played uh, with Lester Young and you know all of those kind of yeah, yeah. jazz legends. So we're doing that. And then right up to sort of a, a brand new song you know, written just a couple of years ago. Totally. And the one that I really want to ask you about is, is The Incredibles. I remember going to see it as a kid in theaters for, for, for a birthday party. Um, is it like one that's surprised you? Like, I, I don't, admittedly, I remember the movie. I don't remember the score. What, oh, what, wait till you hear it. Exactly. That's what I mean. Like, has, <laughs> is, has there been a, one film in particular that surprised you with the music that you maybe uncover when you, you remove the visual cues and, and just listen orally? Um, there have been some surprises for sure. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily um, the removal of the visual cues uh, that did it. I'll give you an example. The movie pa- um, Paris Blues. Yeah. So that's a 1961 film, which I only saw very recently. And it was one of the ones that was suggested to me when I, I sort of made the all call on Facebook. Uh, and that's a Duke Ellington score. Hmm. And it is remarkable to listen to his music from that and how perfectly it fits with this Paris backdrop wow. it's incredible uh, so that one that one was a real surprise uh, just at the quality of the music that's going on pretty much constantly throughout the film there's this big huh. band music being played all the way through it it's something else I think I know what I have to watch this weekend then. you got to check it out yeah, yeah. it's uh, <laughs> it's Paul Newman and Sidney oh, Portier nice. yeah, yeah, yeah it's classics <laughs> it absolute is. classics um, so uh, you guys it's not just the WJ up J- WJO up there you guys are also gonna be joined by a couple of vocalists as well yes uh, so playing the role of Ryan Gosling oh nice we have uh, Curtis Newton who's a local uh, singer and uh, performs all the time uh, around town great performer great singer so excited to have him uh, and Michaeli Rodnick uh, is joining us as well. She's a fantastic singer, graduate of the U of M program. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so we're going to have the two of them up on stage together. Awesome. Uh, Neil, the last thing I want to ask you is, I mean, this is a, an exciting show to look forward to, but just kind of looking down the line, it, you think you're going to be directing anything else in the future? Yes, absolutely. Nice. I don't think I can give the details yet, no, no, but no. I'm slated to uh, direct a show next year that I am very, very excited about. Well, awesome. Thanks so much for coming by the studio. Thank you, Simon, for having me. Well, the first of many conducting appearances by Neil Watson with the Winnipeg Jazz Orchestra. Sunday, two opportunities to take in City of Stars, a celebration of big band film scores, 2 p.m. and again at 7.30 at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. For more information, visit winnipegjazzorchestra.com or the Events tab on Classic 107.